uh, welcome everyone. And what I thought is, uh, I'll probably uh, take a slightly different tack uh, than what the other presenters have done here and building on top of that. So as we look at Industry 4.0, as we are saying, it is riding on top of a digital transformation that has been going on in the industry. Uh, like Somnath uh, mentioned earlier, 1.0 was steam engines in the 19th century, which started that. Uh, then the 2.0 was the assembly line, which started in the 20th century, early part of it. Uh, then in the late 70s, we started seeing the advent of computer technologies in the industry, and which resulted in massive growth that happened in the global economy, resulting in very, very different sort of uh, business processes, including things like globalization, et cetera. And each of these industry revolution um, have resulted in these uh, massive economic changes. Industry 4.0, uh, as we are going through it, is going to be even faster change that is going to be seen in every single industry. And that is riding on top of the digital transformation. So what I thought is, in this talk, I will talk about the digital transformation trends uh, that, have, that we are seeing as, as our time is going on and what is really happening in the industry, especially on the IT side, which is enabling it. And again, uh, we had uh, the AWS talk, which talked about a lot of fundamentals uh, that are resulting in some of these changes. Uh, but a few uh, interesting things I uh, want to bring up over here as we are seeing. One, uh, across all things that we do, the way we live, the way we play, including the way we study, everything is going through a massive change. Uh, there are companies which are coming up and which are becoming the unicorns in very, very short period of time. Even in India, as we speak, there are like 15 unicorns as we speak. I mean, the first unicorn was in Mobi, but since then there have been 15 unicorns. And this is a very compressed period of time uh, where a company has started and generated valuations of more than a billion dollars. For example, Byju's, which was mentioned over there. Uh, similarly, we are seeing uh, trends in the economy, the way things operate, like Uber, which was mentioned over there, which is going to uh, go public sometime this year. They have started the process. So the entire way work is happening is changing. Uh, if you look into some of the lifelines of the S&P, uh, uh, business is 500. Previously, it used to be of the order of like 60 years that has reduced to less than close to 15 years to 20 years kind of a time. So there are these massive changes happening. So if we want to, and, and this is the key slide that I'll be talking to to bring about some of these trends so that all of us can understand uh, what is driving uh, the massive changes which are happening over here. So first of all is the digitized economy. So we are saying that by year 2022, the 60 percent of the world's GDP will be digitized economy. These are like massive numbers. What this means is either you catch the train or you are going to be left out. You will belong then to the museums and the dinosaur age. So that is the rate of the change that is happening over here. Um, whether it is education, as we are talking about, whether it is the car industry, the hotel industry, how we do the customer management, how we do the wealth management. Across every single aspect, every single industry, there is a lot of uh, digital transformation that has been going on. And that is one of the key things which is bearing on minds of all the senior leaders in the industry on how to make sure that they can take their company through this transformation and not be left out. So that is one part. The second thing, and in fact, along with this uh, digital transformation, uh, the IT spend is going to get to like $7 trillion in the next three to four years. So again, uh, this shows where this Industry 4.0 is heading and what is the digital transformation which is driving all of it. The second part is the digital native IT. So as the IT spending is going, um, one of the things that uh, we have seen, the last 20 years have seen massive changes in the IT itself on how we operate and how we do our businesses. As we go forward, more and more spending is going to be what we call the third platform. And what does that really mean? It really means the cloud age technology where the data will be available to be processed in cross cloud fashion. Uh, the notion of the edges where all the data will be going over there. 
you will be using a lot of AI and ML in just about everything that you do. So these are the transformations. So these are going to be the heart uh, and soul of the way business applications are going to be generated. And the prediction is that 75% of the spending is going towards these kind of business applications as we move forward. Um, we already have seen the advent of again the public clouds, uh, uh, how they have been changing the way some of the companies have been built. Uh, there have been companies like Netflix, etc., which have been built completely on the clouds over there. As we see forward, uh, for more and more enterprises, the hybrid cloud notion as we talk about is going to be the reality. And what that means is you can assume humongous amounts of data residing on the clouds, humongous amounts of processing capability that will be available to all the companies out there. But there is going to be an edge which is always going to be present closer to wherever either your manufacturing is, wherever your stores are, wherever you are interacting with the customer and all the data is available at both places and the processing is there. And at the same time, the cloud will continue to extend back to your edge. So that when you need AI, ML techniques to be run, uh, to really get the kind of the data you need for decision making, it will be available for you uh, wherever you are and whenever you need. Uh, for example, in the Cybage discussion when we talked about that there is a dashboard which is present to every employee including CEO when they come in. These are data driven decision making which is happening over here and the companies which are not going to be using them to fullest advantage will be just bulldozed over by all the competitors out there. And uh, given the presence of both the industry and academy, uh, academia over here, I think that is something that we need to keep in mind as we continue to structure our courses, training programs, etc. And so that's right, we pointed out, I mean, there is going to be a very different way of thinking uh, which is going to be needed to be successful in this world uh, which we are talking about. Uh, there is yet another uh, change that we are seeing uh, with respect to how the business apps are being done. Gone are the days uh, when we used to say that there is a legacy app and I need to figure out the technology to continue to run the legacy app. As we see, uh, there is a huge change in the developer profile that is happening over here. The tool set which is available to them, uh, uh, people have all these big libraries which are available so it has become that if, uh, if you are looking at any business process and you want to uh, write your application on top of it, it is about choosing the right technology sets, the right libraries which are available to you. And the expectation is that the development profile, developer profile will change significantly and the number of uh, business apps that we are talking about will be written at a very, very fast pace. Uh, driven to the custom need of the hour or of whatever time it is needed. And there might be as many as like 500 million apps that might be written in the next five years or so. And these will be uh, not necessarily written only by the coders. These can be provided to all your business analysts also, people who understand business, marketing professionals, everyone. And it is going to be like a block or Lego block kind of it which is available where you can say I need this capability from here, this kind of a compute from here and this is the state machine that I want. It is almost like if you can design the business workflow you will be able to code it and create an app out of it. So again something uh, that we really need to bear in mind as we continue to look into the future. And then finally uh, uh, the AI is the new UI and uh, let me just spend the time on what it is going, uh, what, what's happening over there. Uh, we saw Siri, Alexa, Cortana, we, we heard and talked about uh, some of these trends which are going on. Uh, what we are saying is the current way of doing business which is still very user interface click driven kind of it is going to be relegated to the thing of the past. Uh, AI is going to be the new UI. There is going to be more and more communication uh, with all the business processes that are going to happen uh, using the form of the speech where you will be communicating, talking, uh, the, the progress that has happened in the processing of natural language 
has gone to a form and the libraries which are available over there that it is going to make it super easy uh, for us to be able to communicate with them. Now, some examples uh, of uh, the trends which are happening in this area can already be seen in our living rooms, etc., where uh, people continue to interact uh, uh, with Siri and they get done whatever they want. Uh, so, so these these are the few trends that I wanted to highlight uh, to the group over here that we are seeing in the industry for the next three, four, five years, uh, which which are really going to drive and decide who is going to succeed and who is not, and where the investments are going to go. So, again, next, what I wanted to also talk about is uh, going in the light of where the spends, etc., are. Uh, there is a a big engineering, digital engineering spend, which is already happening. And this time, uh, while US continues to lead as we speak as of now, with more than 50% of spend coming over there, there is a big spend which is also happening in Asia Pacific. In fact, more than what is happening in Europe. And interestingly, a large part of that is happening in China. Again, showing the aggressive nature in which different economies are going, uh, sometimes backed up. Uh, by the states, etc., also where they are saying that this is the area where we have to go, and uh, including uh, when we look at uh, some of the uh, where the profiles of the people which are going to be needed in the future, where are the universities or where are some of the students which are going on uh, after U.S. Probably China is producing the largest number of the PhD students uh, who excel in some of these areas. Uh, Alibaba came up in one of the previous discussions also the amount of spend that Alibaba is doing in this area is humongous. And uh, again, the need is that this is where the puck is headed and you either better be prepared or you are going to be left out. Um, again, um, so here what I thought is I'll bring up a couple of examples of uh, what are some of the key technology drivers uh, for the 4.0. Uh, again, I will not brood too much about it. It has already been talked. Artificial intelligence, AI, ML, everyone has been speaking about it. There is, it is a given that you cannot leave it aside. Uh, either you will be left behind or you catch up here. Robotic automation, I mean across the board, uh, be it manufacturing, be it medicine, robotic automation is present in just about all the new developments which are happening. Uh, petabytes of data using the internet of the things are available. Uh, so that the decision making does not have to be post facto, it can really happen uh, as the processes are going. You do not really need to stop uh, what you are doing to say, okay, uh, we, we cross certain boundaries or we breach certain things and we need to be reactive about it. The data is available uh, so that you continue to be proactive there. And then finally, the additive manufacturing. I mean, there are a lot of things that I've not talked about, uh, like security, et cetera, which become very paramount. Uh, how do you identify your user, the identity uh, notion of it. Uh, but from uh, for this group and the conference, I felt that these are some of the key things which are necessary. An example of additive manufacturing can be what is being done in aerospace. Rather than creating lots of different components, 3D printing, not only for plastic, but even also going into the metals, etc., is becoming very common so that you can create the components at much lower price and much higher quality. So. Uh, I think uh, these are some of the other areas uh, where we feel that the trends are heading and we need to make sure uh, that the next generation uh, of students which are coming out, of the people which will enter the workforce, they are aware of the changes and we continue to uh, modify our curriculum accordingly. Uh, the next few minutes I uh, wanted to talk about what we as VMware are doing in this space. So. Our idea is really to create this ubiquitous digital foundation. Uh, the idea being you can run any application on any cloud, on any device, any time with seamless security built into it. Now, to really understand this, uh, maybe I can take the analogy of what has happened in history. Uh, not too long ago, which is just like 20 years, 25 years ago, all of us, when we used to think about IT, we used to think about computer systems, hardware systems, and the whole exercise was about managing them, how do we rack, rack stack them, how do we run them, how do we allocate to the people that is needed. And in the first act, uh, which was, I mean, 20 years ago, 
the virtualization wave came in and uh, slowly and slowly and now oh, people do not really uh, directly work with the physical machines. No one really opens a server platform. Whenever you need any of the compute, you just rent it on uh, uh, in a private cloud, in a hybrid cloud or a public cloud kind of it and it becomes available. Then after that we saw this huge mobile wave which came in and the discussions used to be uh, how many RAM do you have on your phone, whether it is Android, whether it is iOS, uh, whether it is a Windows platform and for all the companies uh, it was a big business on how to incorporate this because previously the people were all used to saying that this is a laptop that you are going to work on and this has all the preloaded software and this is the only thing that you can use uh, in the premise etc. Uh, the next wave which came was running this application uh, the way you want. So now anyone can use the phones that they have, you bring your own device and you can continue to work. Uh, so all the technologies were brought in in that way. Then next that we came was how do you connect? Uh, I mean networking was old. So we see networking and security there have been huge changes. Uh, there have been lots of developments that have happened in the edge level uh, where the idea is that you can, con uh, you can connect whatever your manufacturing units or centers, data centers or uh, to your data centers or uh, if you have any warehouses you can connect them to the data center so that all the data at the sensor level continues to become available uh, for the processing. Now finally the next wave that we are seeing over here is going to be around any cloud. Uh, we feel uh, that very very strongly with all the advent that is happening on the cloud side very custom sort of processing. Uh, we talked about the TensorFlow networks etc kind of it really depending on what you are trying to run you will get the kind of the cloud which is there and uh, on an average the estimate is that a typical enterprise might use 10 plus cloud different types of cloud. So the idea will be how do you bring a certain um, uh, uniformity in the controls or SLAs across the cloud so that you are not stuck with one but you can continue to move the workloads across. So these are uh, some of the uh, areas uh, where VMware has taken the market leadership, thought leadership and providing seamless ways, a complete platform so that you can run whatever is needed uh, from your business processes perspective in a very easy manner. Uh, Uh, just a couple of more slides. I'm also looking at the time so, so that I won't pull back. Okay. So uh, again, a uh, couple of examples of the companies in India that we have been working with on their journey to the digital transformation and PCI, which runs all the transactions which are going on. Another Patanjali, everyone knows over here. We have been working with these companies very closely on their journey to the digital transformation. Um, finally, I wanted to touch upon an area again, uh, uh, this was talked by one of the speakers earlier, uh, was where are we in the Indian ecosystem placed in this new age? So what we did is, uh, VMware we worked uh, with uh, our research group to find out what are some of the new age technologies and how many people we have in our workforce who are qualified towards them. So we show some of the centers like AIML, cloud computing, analytics and we see <coughs> that they are spread across some of these centers but the numbers that we will need are going to be significantly much, much larger over here. Um, even for the current kind of uh, current age, the last age, all the computer uh, uh, R&D uh, needs etc which have been there, it has been found that of all the graduates which come out of our colleges, only 10 percent are concern, uh, considered hireable from an MNC R&D perspective etc. With some of these new age technologies, I think the challenge is going to be bigger for us and we really need to take it by the horn and do the changes which are necessary uh, that the new crop of uh, graduates who are coming out, they are well versed in these technologies. Uh, with this, uh, I'll just uh, bring about two, uh, one more minute, uh, talk about what VMware is doing in some of these areas. Again, we partner with ICT over here and VMware has a program of skilling uh, the workforce uh, using course curriculum, 
uh, working with the academia. There are various colleges where we have research groups with them, where we fund them, and to help uh, bring uh, the workforce so that they are aware of these technologies. And finally, the last thing I want to talk about is, uh, so this was the uh, video that I wanted to run over here, which didn't come out. Uh, so there is a program that VMware has included called Tara. And uh, what we have found is in India, uh, there has been a challenge of the women folk who has been in the workforce, but for various reasons, who had the, to leave the workforce, but they never join again. So as part of this program, VMware is going to, uh, for free, train 15,000 women in various technologies, which will enable them to come back to the workforce with a renewed confidence. So I'll again uh, request all of you, if you know people, uh, your friends, family, who have left the workforce, but who would want to take advantage of the various trainings uh, that we provide. There are various levels of training that we provide over here who can take advantage of the program. And again, part of making sure that we skill our workforce well. So with that, again, thank you. I, I hope uh, that you got some idea of the trends which are going on. If there are any things, I'll be around to answer any questions.